Uh, last one here, speaking of autonomous driving, which was, of course, the uh, that was the aspect they were most concerned with sharing because that's hard stuff, man. Whoo! Mm. Tom is driving hard stuff. That's the aspect they were most worried about. And also, uh, shout out to the spot video, uh, robotics. Interesting, exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. We have an autonomous robot here using UVC light to disinfect warehouses. This UVC light, powerful stuff, potent stuff, the same stuff that we saw in the phone soap product that we featured a while back to clean your smartphone from certain germs. And then you were sending me links, I remember once upon a time, uh, units that could be placed in healthcare scenarios yes. that could disinfect a room using UVC light. Yep. Well, this is the next phase of it. It was very useful. A lot of people on the spot video were saying, what can I do with the thing? Oh, it's a, it's marching around, big deal. There was, there was some of that attitude. Mm -hmm. it's people, you get, you, vision, vision. It doesn't have to be right now. It doesn't have to be. A lot of things are not pouring you a drink right now. Mm -hmm. But you just had to expand. You go just a little further. I mean, you don't have to. You could just only care about stuff that's doing something for you right now. If, if, that's your, if that's your way of thinking, your line of work, so be it. But to those that are capable of pushing the vision a step further, they will benefit greatly because they can imagine a future in which they can modify their movements today in order to take better advantage of what that future looks like in general. If you're only ever concerned exclusively about what a thing can do for you immediately, you might be missing out on opportunities in the future. So it could be helpful to forecast a little further for yourself. Anyway, when I saw Spot, that's all the stuff that started going through my head. The, the eventuality. What does this mean? That's where I wanted to... What does it mean? Anyway... Here is an example of a practical application in which robotics go, could go to work immediately in a way that re really would be difficult for a human to replicate. This is a robot that will move about an industrial facility warehouse with these powerful UVC lights. It can, be, can work autonomously or be driven off-site. And in, in about half an hour, it can cover and disinfect around 4,000 square feet mm. of surface. And the thing that really struck me here, that I, when I was reading is it can also also neutralize aerosolized virus particles. I did not know that about UVC. So it's not just surfaces, but it's also stuff in the air. Huh. Very interesting. So Will's got a clip here, uh, robot moving about. And uh, as you can tell, uh, seamless activity, faster actually than I imagined. Oh, yeah. Ro the robot is uh, from Ava Robotics. Uh, researchers from MIT have have uh, collaborated here to create this uh, this creature. It's currently working at a food bank, I believe. Uh, what did they say here? Which food bank was it? <clears throat> GBFB's Warehouse, the Greater Boston Food Bank. Hmm. So think about this, Will. The food bank, you know how that works. You're trying to get food to people. You would be concerned if this, if the surface of this stuff you were handing this stuff out was in, in, infected in some way. Mm -hmm. Spin this dude around, feel a little bit more confident. This guy can take out 90% of virus particles on the surfaces in about half an hour, 4,000 square feet, traveling at 0.22 miles per hour. Huh. Nothing wrong with that. So again, maybe not everybody has a vision for how all this stuff is gonna work immediately, but here's an example, practical application, where there's going to be a real impact and effect if this, if this tech goes to work. Now, it's important to note, another reason why it's nice to have a robot do this is UVC is dangerous to humans. Hmm. So again, a guy can't be waving a wand out there. No. So this is perfect job for a robot. Yeah. And here we have it in the form of, uh, do they have a name for this one? Just Ava Robotics? They don't name this one specifically? Um. Robot, robots have to have a name, don't they? George. This one doesn't have it yet, I don't think. Unless I'm missing it in the article. Anyway, <laughs> you can give it whatever name you want. Come up with a good name for that robot. Travels faster than I thought. 4,000 square feet. Amazon could have these things flying about. Yeah, in uh, the warehouse. In the warehouse when, uh, during off hours. Yep. It's cool. I'm into it. The future can be whatever we want it to be. It's just a matter of how, how far in advance you want to look. You're capable of looking. That's an investment too, mm -hmm. right? You got to be out here 
sort of scouring the thing in order to envision how our actions today are going to impact the future and how, I mean, you hear Elon talking about it with AI. Like this stuff is happening. And if you can't even see it happening, then you certainly aren't going to have an impact on it. Mm -hmm. You're just going to be a bystander. However, even for a regular citizen, if you can start to imagine that future, there are things, little things you can do now, even if it's just investing in a company, even if it's just, uh, if you have a small business, there are things you can do now. Here's an example of something happening right now mm -hmm. as a consequence of envisioning what tech can do for you. And that's what these students at MIT were capable of right here. So that's the stuff I'm talking about. Extend the vision. Enjoy the future.